the number of, of uh, Japanese companies established in, in Catalonia, we see that around just 3% uh, of, uh, of the foreign companies are coming from Japan. We, we have heard uh, talks about just the Chinese FDI abroad, about the Indian FDI abroad, uh, but, but the, the reality right now is that the main investor in Catalonia nowadays uh, from, from the whole Asian region is, is Japan, and it will be, uh, I think, for, for, for many years. I think there's also a very important uh, 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 project, which is a Mediterranean corridor uh, that will connect uh, uh, the south of Spain uh, 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 with, uh, with the north of Europe via just high-speed train. And hopefully, I think it's in 2020, uh, it will be uh, finished. And uh, I think this is very important also for uh, Catalonia and for Barcelona really to, to become a hub uh, for uh, Asian goods just coming to Europe. Well, this is uh, really a very good news uh, because uh, uh, one of the, the main problems for the goods just coming to, to Barcelona was the distribution uh, also to Northern European countries. And that was one of the main reasons why actually the Japanese companies were also just using other ports in Europe, like for instance the port of Rotterdam in, in Holland. Uh, Respectful and disciplined people, they are honest, trustful, polite, civilized, committed, and working with enthusiasm. They are able to take sacrifices, and they are really engaged to the task that they are having. Fantastic teamwork, really loyal, and modest people. You cannot be arrogant in Japan, that's clear. There is a refined culture and attention to the detail. There are very strong in processes and planning excellent in execution. I have never seen the ability to go to perfection in execution I have seen in, Jap in Japanese companies. Also, the ability to satisfy a demanding and refined consumer. Probably Japan, as you all know, uh, the most difficult and sophisticated consumer in the world. And I think that the one, the strength, significant strength is the young generation. I am of the opinion that things are changing. Uh, there, are, there is more female presence in the, gener in the young gen generation. Youngers, youngsters are less conservative and with less prejudices. They are more risk takers <coughs> and hope, uh, they are open to break rules and to work overseas, which is something more difficult in the past. And before the summer, Masato and I were sitting in my office you know, evaluating all these events and we were saying, okay, so now what's next? What can we do next? And we say, we're facing questions like, is Japan fully globalized? You know, this noise about the political leadership. So what's next for the country? And then we're talking and then we decide, you know, this event could be a very interesting starting point of opening uh, the Japanese way of doing business, the Japanese culture to the rest of the world. Besides that admiration that already Ms. Bach had already shown that we all have. So what about the real business? Uh, the keyword, the, the lar largest, biggest, important keyword for me after the quake was resiliency. Resiliency. Um, well, it, it has been like that for many companies um, throughout human beings' history. Always we, we need to be resilient after something happened. But, and it's important to plan for it, of course. It's exercise beforehand to imagine something and prepare for it. But you can never prepare 100% for something comes to you. That will come all of a sudden. In addition to planning ahead something, which is a digital manner, I think analog side is quite important too. When something happened, you should be able to react very quickly. And that reaction should actually come from the people. How are you going to drive your people to react that immediately under the pressure? How, how would you mobilize your people to react today? I think you need engagement from your day-to-day -day operations, not under the crisis, but before the crisis in a normal daytime operations, you have to build engagement and team or culture for your organizations. Well, it was a difficult time because uh, um, you have a choice to get away, of course, but uh, most of Japanese companies, people chose to stay there even actually went there, went there after the quake to help the recovery of the factories. In Nissan's case too, a CEO went there directly after the quake, and people in a factory really, you know, get motivated and started working on the, working on the recovery. That was amazing. And also, uh, we had a lot of 
helping hands from overseas. And uh, I'm not in a position to express officially, you know, Japanese people's, you know, uh, thanks to you. But just as an individual, I feel really thankful to those who gave us a hand in a critical time. So thank you very much for, for giving hands to us. Companies should possess, possess uh, not only the good strategy, but also the capacity to uh, react in front of the crisis. We had learned it from the director, and it is important for the com uh, competitiveness of any company. We should never let this variable experience fade away, because this disaster still many people are suffering at this moment. I believe uh, that the companies can encourage these people by showing a quick recovery and uh, transforming this experience into a positive value for all of us.